Hi everyone and welcome to our lesson on feet and yards. Last week we talked about inches and how we can use that to measure. Now we're going to use a different unit of measurement known as feet and yards. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to skip over that and warm up our brains with the problem of the day. It says the hour hand on Freddy's clock points between the five and the six. The minute hand points to the six. Freddy thinks the time is half past six. Is Freddie right or wrong? Well, first, let's get that important information. His hour hand is between the five and the six. So I'm going to draw a clock to help me. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to try our best. I like to separate my quarters first. Once I have my clock, I'll do my hour hand on here. So he said it's between the five and the six, which I know if it's between that, it's on its way to six o'clock, but not six o'clock yet. So it's still within that five o'clock time. So I'll put five in my hour spot. Now the minute hand points to the six. We know if our minute hand points to the six, that's our half hour mark, which is 30 minutes. So it looks like it is half past five. So as Freddie thinks the time is half past six. Hmm, half past six would be 6.30. Is he right or wrong? Well, it looks like we did part one of this question already. We drew his clock and we see that it is 5.30. Freddie is wrong. Sorry, Freddie. He might have made the mistake of seeing five and six and thinks, hmm, well, it's on almost six, so I'm going to put the six. We have to remember our clock rules. Let's practice some more. Beth estimates a sheet of paper is 12 inches long. Damon estimates it is eight inches long. The sheet of paper is 11 inches long. Whose estimate was closer? So remember, estimate is another word for an educated guess. They're predicting what it's, so Beth, I'm gonna write 12. And Damon says eight. I'm gonna put P for paper, is actually 11. We wanna know who is closer. Well, to know who's closer, I'm gonna see which number is closest to 12. You can subtract or you could do a number line. I'll do a number line. I'll put eight, nine, 10, 11. We don't have to do starting from zero. We can just put the important numbers and see which is closer. Well, the paper is 11, Beth is 12, Damon is eight. Damon is one, two, three jumps away. Wow, Beth here is only one jump away, which means Beth is closer to the actual amount. Look at the picture of the pencil. The length of the pencil is measured in inches. How long is this pencil? Well, we start at zero with the end of the object and we measure by counting the numbers to the other end of the object. We're gonna count and it says about for each of them because it's not exactly on that three mark, but it's really close to it. So is it about one inch? Well, if I look at one, that's just part of the pencil, nope about two inches, and again, just part of the pencil. Four inches, well, four would come over here and that part of the pencil doesn't exist. Let's see, three inches. About three inches means it's almost there and our pencil lines up to it. I'd say about three inches. Describe how to estimate the length of an object. So some objects are measured in feet, which, you would need for larger objects like the floor, rooms, animals, furniture, because you might need a lot of rulers <laughs> to measure those. Well, feet, you could use um, longer, like a yardstick, which are taller. I would say they look like tall rulers. We'll have to find a picture of them on the next page so you can explore with it. But you would use less tools because it's big enough to measure larger objects. It says, what are some objects that could be measured in yards? So yards are even bigger than feet. So it's inches, feet, yards. Let's see if I can write that down. Inches, you would need 
a ruler measures 12 feet, one foot, so one ruler is a foot, and an inch is, is a piece. So I'm going to try to split up each of those, or inches. A ruler would be a foot. A yard would be with a yardstick even bigger. So it's inches, feet, yards. And you would use yards to measure sports fields, city blocks, or buildings. So if you think of a football field, and they always say we have the yard lines, that's measuring how big. So we have the 50 yard mark, 40 yards, 30 yards. They're measuring the length of the field by those big numbers on there. It's kind of cool. How do you estimate the length of an object in inches? So estimating is imagining that object next to a ruler. And you think, well, and here's an inch, and an inch is about the size of my part of my thumb. So if I put my, my uh, pencil next to my thumb, how many of those would I need? Just making kind of an educated guess with what you have. All right, let's practice. Sarah used 30 rulers to measure the length of her driveway. How many yardsticks would she have used? Oh boy, so this is what's called conversion. A ruler, I'm gonna draw a ruler here. One ruler equals 12 inches. That's how many inches are on a ruler. Now, 12 inches is the same as one foot. These are the abbreviations for that. She needs to measure in yards. So we're going to say, we're going to move over to this. We know that three feet equals one yard. So we would need three rulers to make one yard. She wants to measure her, her driveway. She uses 30 rulers to measure. That's a lot of rulers. How many yardsticks would she have used? So if she has 30 of them, I'm going to do groups of three. That's how many for a yard for th till I get to 30 total. So I have groups of three here because three rulers equals one yard, so one yardstick. So I'm going to circle, and while I circle, I'm going to count, and that'll tell me how many yardsticks she would use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She could have used nine yardsticks instead of 30 rulers. Sometimes you have to think, what tool would you need less of? It would probably be easier to measure in yards instead of rulers. Because look how many rulers she used instead of how many yardsticks she could have used. A lot of these conversions and measurements take practice. So let's keep on exploring. We have a picture here, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw X's on things that you would measure in feet or yards, and you're going to circle things that you would maybe measure in inches. So I'm going to go ahead and circle an X, and I'm curious to see what you'll circle an X. I went ahead and said I could measure shoes, the basketball, the clock, the exit sign, and inches. I feel like those things would make the most sense to use a ruler for. For feet, I would need a yardstick to measure, which includes three feet. Because they're larger, I think the basketball hoop, the bleachers, the windows, the door, the chair, and even the basketball court itself would need yardsticks to measure. Did you get the same things? Let's see what they say. Ooh, they use the chair in inches. I think that could go either way. What do you think? It says you can measure in feet or yards. A foot is equal to 12 inches. A yard is equal to 36 inches. Length can be measured in any direction. So tall or wide, you can measure. So let's see what it says here. Three rulers is three feet. 
one yardstick is one yard. Good to know. So it says this cabinet is three feet, which would mean it's also one yard. So you can decide how you want to say. You could say, well, that's a three foot uh, cabinet, or you could say that cabinet is one yard long. So your mission today, you're going to find and measure in feet. Now this will be tricky at home because I don't think most people have yardsticks, so we're going to have to get creative. I might have everybody print out rulers. You're going to have to print out three of them and tape them together back to back to back to make your own yardstick. Then go around to make and measure the objects that they're asking you to. I'm going to write one. So it says a desk. If you have a desk at home, measure your desk. It has a teacher's desk. If you have a larger desk, do that. Do the ones that make sense. If there are objects you don't have at home, then you can skip that. How can you measure a large object with a ruler? Well, what do you think? We would do a strategy very similar to what we're going to do today for at-home learning. So how would you measure a very large object like this desk with only one ruler? Those are questions you're going to have to ask yourself as you explore today's math. All right, everyone, I believe in you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.